I've always been a fan of Goldberg. I'm not ashamed of that. I don't hide from that. Who's next? I always thought Goldberg was fucking cool, me personally. Now I feel kind of bad for Goldberg. Because I feel like he's a victim of some revisionist history, similar to The Ultimate Warrior, where a lot of fans, and in particular people in the business, during the time that those guys were in the business, tried to shit on them and diminish them and what they accomplished, talk about how they got their spot because of their look, and they weren't good workers, and they weren't real talents, and da-da-da-da-da, and always want to downplay them, you know. It's one of these things where... A lot of these guys are saying it because, A, they're either jealous of the spot that these guys got and then ultimately merited and deserved, and or, B, they're jealous of the money that those guys were able to make because they got over more than these other guys did. That's the truth of the matter. You know, To me, Goldberg was a big star, no matter what anybody says, during an incredibly hot period of professional wrestling. The 50s were hot with television coming into the fold and guys like Gorgeous George and Luthez and Vern Gagne, what have you. Uh, the 70s of the territory days were really hot too. The 80s were hot and the late 90s were hot with the Monday Night Wars. And he was a top guy during that period. You can say what you want about him, but you can't take that away from him no matter how much certain elements of the wrestling community, both in the business and out of the business, try to make it different than what the truth actually is. I'm not saying he was the biggest star of the time, because he wasn't, but he was a big star. And he brought a different feeling to WCW's product, and I always liked that. Where you had this kind of gang warfare shit with the NWO and all the good stuff they did, and then the bad stuff they did too. Uh, but the big names you had in there, and all the focus on uh, the old WWE guys, the guys that have been around for years, and talking about old shit. Here's Goldberg, he comes in, he doesn't really say shit, he... Yeah, has that BMF entrance, that badass motherfucker walk down to the ring, two, three minutes, Bob's your uncle, it's fucking over. And the streak, you know, people want to downplay the streak, but the streak mattered to a lot of people, and it most certainly mattered to me. And all of these years later, if the streak didn't fucking matter, and it didn't get over, and Goldberg didn't get over, why would people still talk about how shitty it was, not that the streak was ended by Kevin Nash at Starkey 98, but the fashion in which it was, and then the fact that WCW had no real plan to have Goldberg come back and sit there and go after these guys and make anything out of that. I know we'll talk about the freaking putting the arm through the window, but that happened later on down the road and all this other crap. The fact is, is that streak mattered to a lot of people because Goldberg mattered to a lot of people because unlike most of the people in today's business, Goldberg actually got himself over and WCW got him over. And frankly, along with Sting and the NWO, which even in and of itself was a borrowing of a New Japan idea, Goldberg was one of the best creations that WCW ever had. I wish we got that type of character build out of somebody in today's product that didn't feel like it was just a cheap Goldberg ripoff. You look at the Ryback going on his big long streak when he, he was first debuted in 2012 in WWE. All the Goldberg chants. If Goldberg didn't get over, then why the fuck are people chanting Goldberg? And not to mention when it comes to Goldberg, the fact that WWE had a successful char parody character named Gilberg. They pumped in the freaking Gilbert chance, and he's doing all this shit. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> so don't tell me Goldberg wasn't a star and didn't get over. WWF thought he was a big enough deal to create <laughs> a spoof character called Gilbert. Need I say more? Just like they did with the Huckster and the Nacho Man. <laughs> so... I'm excited about the thought of Goldberg coming back to WWE, you know, in part to try and erase from my memory that bad run he had with the WWE in 2003, 2004, in particular that disastrous ending with that horrible match with him and Lesnar at WrestleMania 20. I also look at it as a situation to get right and do right and make up for those previous mistakes, but also he's one of the few fresh big names you can actually bring in that could have a little bit of an impact. You know, you've already went to the Stingwell. You take your comes back every year. I mean, The Rock, Austin, you know, all these other guys you've done stuff with in recent years. You haven't done shit with Goldberg in over a decade. 
So you want to talk about it feeling fresh, even though it's a name from the past. It's about as fresh as it could be for a name from the past and actually have it work. Do it now while you still can. I mean, this is a guy pushing 50. You probably should have already done it a couple of years ago, but you didn't. But you could still do it now. You have to do it now. Why not get one last run out of the guy, whether that lasts for three months, six months, a year, two years, whatever the case might be. Can't really tell me it's a bad thing to have him come in. And it would be a much needed injection of life and interest into the WWE company and product heading towards WrestleMania. I don't want to hear this shit about how he's taking somebody else's spot. You know what? If he's taking somebody else's spot, that's because the guys whose spot he's taking aren't fucking good enough to have that spot to begin with. Maybe if these guys in the business now and in the WWE now could actually get themselves over, regardless of whatever excuses you want to make, you wouldn't have to bring back a Goldberg to help out the product. But the truth is they do. And the truth is they need whatever the fuck they can get. And I know what we'll talk about in terms of long term and this and that. And I'm with you on it. It doesn't help the company super duper long term in terms of the product. But at this point in time, fuck the future because the present sucks donkey dick too. Ding dong, dumb dicks. Let's make a little product a little bit better now before they run off any more fans where you don't even need to worry about a future. I'm all down with them bringing them in. Especially at Survivor Series. Why not? I understand wanting to prop up one of your big four shows, especially around Thanksgiving time in the heart of the NFL season. You know, when you look at it, the thought of having a Goldberg involved where you could potentially get three of your four big pay-per-views out of him with Survivor Series and then in January, Royal Rumble, and then a couple months later, WrestleMania? Why would you not? The timing of his return makes all the sense in the world. That's a way to maximize in your investment in a minimal time frame. That's genius from the WWE. I'm with them on that. To be able to potentially get Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, and WrestleMania out of Goldberg, why wouldn't you do that? On top of that, bringing them back at this time could really set the table nicely to potentially, if you wanted to go in this direction, have him be one of the headliners for the 2017 WWE Hall of Fame class. It just opens up so many possibilities. And you talk about uh, the tie-in to the WWE 2K17 video game. Having Goldberg on the Survivor Series show most certainly can't help and can't hurt the video game and its sales. And also sets up a new merchandise avenue for the company. Brings in some more revenue because people are going to buy Goldberg merchandise. Makes so much sense. And even having a match between him and... And Brock Lesnar, having both of these guys on a Survivor Series show that needs some life carries a lot of interest to me. You know, it can be a real positive. It can be a good thing to have both of these guys involved. Now, I will say I am not that excited about the actual thought of Brock Lesnar facing Goldberg at Survivor Series 2016. I'm just not. And some of this maybe harkens back to the fact that the last time I saw these two in the ring, it was a disaster back at WrestleMania 20 in the Madison Square Garden in 2004. But I'll look past that. I just more so and more importantly think this is a lose-lose situation. And I hate matches where you go into it and you say, no matter what, it's a lose-lose situation. If you're setting up a match and nobody's going to benefit from it, then why have the match? And that's so often the problem with what WWE does. It's like now having The Undertaker come back and work at WrestleMania. The streak's over. Him beating Bray Wyatt doesn't really help either guy. Him beating Shane McMahon doesn't help either guy. It's a lose-lose situation. If you don't get any pop out of it and you don't get any benefit out of it, then why would you do the match other than for that one particular match? And if we're in that business where we're literally just hot-shotting just to get one match and that's all we care about and we'll worry about the rest later, you're in a really bad place. Would you look at this. It'd be ridiculous to bring Goldberg in and just have him come in and serve him up as jobber fodder to Brock Lesnar. That's not a way to maximize on your Goldberg investment. And also, in terms of Lesnar, part of the problem now is the WWE doesn't know how to book a monster, and you've built such a monster that it's become so predictable that it's not nearly as interesting as it was a couple of years ago to see Brock Lesnar. Because why the hell would I care about his matches if they're all going to be worked the same, they're all going to be presented the same, and ultimately they're all going to end the same. 
So Goldberg losing does nothing for Goldberg. Lesnar winning does nothing for Lesnar. Vice versa, Goldberg winning may do something for him, but especially if it came because of interference or something else, then you're just using Goldberg as a plot device, and that's a horrible utilization of Goldberg. On top of that, if you had Lesnar lose, and it was because of some type of shenanigans or help or hijinks or interference, then you're not doing anything to put any chinks in Lesnar's armor. All you're doing is further building up the monster and further validating the fact that nobody could be this guy, which instead creates a massive problem for the company. And we just can't have that. Just can't have that anymore. We can't have Brock Lesnar continuing to be this fucking mega monster because it's not working. So if Goldberg wins or loses, it's not good. And Goldberg winning and having Lesnar lose, and let's say you do it clean, that most certainly isn't a win for anybody. Because why would you have Brock Lesnar end the Undertaker's streak just to sit there and put over Goldberg? That's fucking dumb. Now, the one other thing I would say, I would maybe rather see Bill Goldberg saved for the Royal Rumble for his return. Imagine that if he came back as a surprise entrant at the Rumble, and they use him at the Rumble and then WrestleMania, and then maybe SummerSlam, and you create a program. To me, the guy I think of is something over the U.S. title with Rusev. You have Rusev eliminate him at the Royal Rumble after Goldberg looks strong. Then at WrestleMania, you could do some type of borderline squash match where Goldberg beats him very quickly, and then Rusev takes him out of action. And come SummerSlam, you've got a grudge match type of situation. You've got yourself a bit of a monster match between these two guys. It could be a nice platform at that point in time. Goldberg's gotten over, but then at the end of the day, Rusev goes over. It's something that can help you short-term and long-term. That might be what I would do. I just don't think Lesnar-Goldberg at Survivor Series is a good idea because, like I said, it's a lose-lose situation. I'm happy Goldberg could be coming back to the WWE. I'm ecstatic about that. It's got my interest, but just don't expect me to care about this match at Survivor Series. Ugh.